everybody welcome back to my channel I'm glad you could be here with me this is my spoiler filled review for Dawn Shard by Brandon Sanderson it is the second major novella in the Stormlight Archives series and if you have not read Dawn Shard uh, and you are, are just wanting to go ahead and start Rhythm of War that's perfectly fine. You don't have to read Dawn Shard in order to enjoy Rhythm of War. I would recommend it, but there's not any major spoilers for uh, Dawn Shard in Rhythm of War. So you can read them independently of each other. You can choose to want, read one over the other. It doesn't necessarily matter. But I would highly recommend that you read Dawn Shard because there are a few things that are mentioned in Rhythm of War that come from Dawn Shard. So, if you have already read Dawn Shard, you already know what I'm talking about. Uh, so, uh, feel free to stick around. If you have not read Dawn Shard, click the link in my description below to go to my spoiler-free review for Dawn Shard and Rhythm of War. I did a combined spoiler-free review for those. So, go there now if you don't want spoilers. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Okay, here we go. You, you've had enough time. <laughs> if you're still here, you're ready for spoilers. Uh, this was a really fascinating little book. I, I was thoroughly enjoying myself while I was reading Don Shard. Uh, and I, I love characters. I love good character development. Uh, I'm, I'm a very character-focused reader. And so being able to do a deep dive into Risen's character was really, really good for me. Uh, and especially because she's always just kind of popped up in the interludes in the previous books. She's never really had her full story fleshed out. And we still don't know some things, of course, after reading this book. But I thought it gave us enough that... Uh, that I, that I feel like I feel like I know Risen a whole lot better than I did. And I thought it was cool to have more from Lopin too. Lopin is just a gas. I I always get a huge kick out of his humor and he's just he's totally the comic relief of of the series, or at least one of them. I, I just thoroughly enjoy Lopin. So his part on the journey was really great. Um so, you know, we, we start off, we find out that Risen has gotten her own vessel. It's been given to her by her Babsk because he has retired from the sea. And uh, so now his vessel is hers and she's the owner. And so they're, they've been tasked with this mission to go to the island of Amia to to research some of the treasures there and to see what they can find, uh, maybe find an oath gate and a few things so that they could travel back and forth to Amia uh, from Urethru. The thing that I loved about Risen's character is she is always overcoming obstacles. Uh, and it seems like that's a pattern with the, the latest entries in the Stormlight Archive, both this one and Rhythm of War, is a lot of it's about overcoming adversity and obstacles. But specifically for Risen, she's a paraplegic, right? And I loved how much research was obviously done by Brandon Sanderson uh, into what it what it means to be a paraplegic and the, the struggles that you go through and the emotional battles and the... Uh, the the watchful eye of different people who are who are worried about you that you're just going to fall apart one day and they're going to have to pick up the pieces because it, you know they think you can't function right in society because you don't have the the use of some of your appendages and so I I just I I thought it was very very realistic and very well done he really pulled on your heartstrings for risen for all the ways that people looked down on her and how they babied her and treated her as someone who just couldn't do things for herself but obviously she can that was the awesome flip side of the story is she's got so much confidence 
and she's got so much ingenuity that she can she can think about ways to rethink and modify her surroundings and and modify her mobility so that she can do the things that she needs to do and she wishes that people wouldn't wouldn't baby her so much i mean obviously there's some things that she needs help with but overall she's a very strong and accomplished character despite the fact that she's a paraplegic and i thought that was just amazing uh, an amazing portrayal and uh, then also to uh, have to deal with the 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 jealousy of the crew over the fact that she was given the vessel instead of them uh, and uh, the captain especially specifically was extremely jealous of Riz, and it was evident. She was willing to respect Risen's authority, and you know she she knew her place. But deep down, she was not a happy person with the way things had gone, and so that also put Risen in a in a spot of handicap. So uh, I, I thought I thought everything was really well done and well executed, and uh, that. The, the, the small little bit of the world that he built in Don Shard was just brilliantly done, I thought. Um, and of course, the Lopen bringing his uh, little bit of levity to the situation. And because uh, he, he really knows what it had been like to overcome adversity, too, because at one point he was missing an arm and then he regrew it with Stormlight. So uh, once he was bonded. So he, he kind of knew where Rizm was coming from in a sense. And, uh, and maybe that's why they get along so well, too. So um, I thought there was a good bit of mystery to the book as well. Because obviously somebody did not want them to go to Amia. And uh, as we find out later, it's the Sleepless. And, and even her own servant was a member of the Sleepless uh, and was kind of a double agent, uh, trying to trying to avoid killing anybody if he didn't have to, but doing everything in his power to keep them from reaching their destination. Uh, first, it was the spoiled grain, and they found out a way to overcome that, and then it was the uh, the the dead fish in the water, or or at least what the sleepless had constructed to be a dead fish and. Uh, every single time it was like, oh, this is a bad omen, now we need to turn around. And Rizm was like, no, no, there's, there's got to be a way that we can work through this and still get to our destination. And the crew was already afraid because other ships had tried to sail to this island and, uh, and they, they came back with the whole crew dead and things so they already really didn't want to go to the island they were already really scared but they were you know it was a job and they they had been hired to do it so uh, so they were looking for every excuse that they could get even to turn around and go back and risen just wasn't having it and i loved that so uh, i loved that rock's daughter was on the trip as well and especially it really tugged at my heart when she got her her shard plate, uh, when they were in the cave with the oath gate and the dawn shard, um, that that she that she was able to to take that shard plate and blade for herself, and um, I just thought that was such a heartwarming moment because uh, the the horn eaters, I I feel like they really needed a boom like that, so. Uh, one of their own being a shard bearer, I thought that was just really special. So uh, I'm glad that she was along on the trip as well. It was just amazing to see the power of the storms that were thrown at them. And then when that when they finally got to the island, and they came to realize that everything on the surface was pretty much an illusion that the sleepless had worked so hard to put up so that they wouldn't find. Uh, the secret catacombs and they wouldn't find the oath gate and things like that and then the big sleepless creature that kept attacking them and uh, could have killed Lopin and things like that it was just that that was just 
crazy but you know these these are the guardians some of the guardians of the cosmere and they wanted to make sure that nobody found these secrets and would misuse them so um i was kind of sad in a way for Rizm because now she's no longer able to bond a spren and uh, you know if she had bonded a spren she might have regained the use of her legs because of stormlight but you know she doesn't really need that she's perfect just the way she is and i think that was that wasn't really stated up front but i think that was something that the reader can really glean from it she's she's perfect just the way she is no matter her handicap she doesn't need stormlight to to give her back the use of her legs because she's doing just fine the way she is and she's got a more important task now because she's the guardian of the dawn shard uh, and i thought i thought it was really cool to learn some little tidbits about the dawn shard we didn't learn a whole lot but apparently the dawn shard it's one of four of its kind i think it is that had a major part in the in the shattering of adenalsium so that was that was pretty cool that was an interesting little tidbit to learn so it was really short really concise but i had a blast with it i i, I read it in like less than two days so yeah it was just a really really good book i i had a lot of fun reading it one thing that i thought was kind of cool is there's an easter egg from don shard that pops up in rhythm of war I won't say anything just in case it spoils it because we're not talking about Rhythm of War here. That's more for my, uh, that's more for my spoiler-filled video for Rhythm of War, which you can find in the description, by the way. I'll link it below. But more importantly, <laughs> it's uh, it shows that some things are happening all the way back at the very beginning of. Of the story that we started with uh, even all the way back in the way of Kings during that time period there were things happening where there are other beings watching over things to try and prevent certain things from happening and pay very close attention in the first chapters of rhythm of war once you get to that point because there's a little Easter egg a little tiny easter egg because they do a flashback to Gavilar's feast and uh if, if if you if you paid attention to this review and you and you have read don shard you'll pick up a little easter egg in that very first chapter or two so that's all i'm gonna say but let me know in the comments what you thought about this review uh did i miss anything of major importance that i should have talked about and uh, I, I'd love to know what that is. Uh, make sure and interact with me in the comments. Uh, check out all this stuff here. Make sure that you do this to help me support my channel. And most importantly, guys, make sure that you're reading more books. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.